Ooh. How does this work? Can somebody, oh, aha. Oh, hello. Thank you for joining me in my favorite kitchen tool for Veg with Lisa live. I'm Lisa and this is most definitely, definitely live. But before we get started, type in the comments, say hi, let me know that you're here and that you can see me and that you can hear me because otherwise I always worry that I'm talking to myself. Hi, Rob. So this is Indeed Veg with Lisa Live, where today I'm going to show you how to make a really simple, awesome lentil soup with <coughs> Excuse me, with staples that you hopefully keep around your kitchen pretty regularly. Because in case you haven't noticed, it's the, the most wonderful time of the year, or maybe not, however you see those things. But it can be really crazy. Our to-do list are really long. Our naughty and nice list is really long. And I want us to know how to hit the easy button without just hitting redial on DoorDash, right? So when things get a little bit crazy, we have a tendency just to run up to the food truck up the street to grab a veggie burger and fries or order a pizza, right? There's nothing wrong with any of that. And if that's what you want to do, go right ahead and do it. But I want to show you how to make up this delicious pot of lentil soup that probably uses things you have in your pantry and that you normally keep in your fridge. It's hearty. It's delicious. It freezes really well. So it's a wonderful way to hit the easy button, <laughs> Rob says Smashville, without, you know, derailing your best laid health plans. Okay, so we're going to get started. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. So what I've done is I've already got a pot on the stove with some olive oil and some onion that I sauteed ahead of time. So I'm going to add some more aromatics. That's a fancy French word for things that smell good when you cook them. And in this particular, oh, you know what? Before I do that, I want to show you my carrots. I'm also going to put carrots in here. And because these tastes take a little longer to cook and a little are a little less easy to burn. Does that make sense? I'm going to put them in with my onions before the rest of my aromatics. But this recipe, which I got off of the Cookie and Kate website, which is a fantastic food blog. If you're not familiar, I'll post the link in the in the comments below. But it calls for carrots. And you can just use regular old carrots, but I just wanted to show and tell these. Aren't isn't this absolutely beautiful? I just got this at the regular grocery store, and I'm gonna cut into that. But these baby beauties I got at the farmer's market because carrots are a cool weather veggie, and they're they might be showing up at your local farmer's market. In fact, these are the tops that I cut off of these carrots. Isn't that absolutely stunning? And I just keep them on my counter like a bouquet. Okay, anyway. Less I digress any longer. So I'm going to cut into this carrot. This recipe does call for a carrot. Aha, surprise. Isn't that absolutely beautiful? The inside of this gorgeous magenta carrot is bright, brilliant, vibrant orange. All right, so I just wanted to show you that. I'm going to cut this up and chop it up real quickly, hopefully without cutting any fingers off. So... Some of the things, the pantry items that I'm going to put in this soup that I always keep on hand, and I'm hoping that you do as well, are, like I said, olive oil and onions already in my pot, and carrots. No matter what kind of carrots you like, I like to always keep carrots on hand because they're they're so versatile. Um, they're great in soups. I'm kind of doing a poor job of this, but you get the point. They're really fantastic in soups. And these little babies are absolutely delicious raw. I'm not a really big fan of raw carrots in general. I think kind of on the, the holiday crudité plata, if you will, they're a little boring. And But anyway, these taste completely differently. So I've, I keep these clean and ready to roll in the fridge. And carrots are fantastic roasted. You can just do a bazillion things. So I always keep them on hand. Two other things that I always keep on hand are the rest of my aromatics. And I've got some chopped garlic and some fresh ginger. There was not fresh ginger in the original recipe, but I love it, especially this time of the year. 
because it's um, it's very warming. It's good for our digestion. Um, it's antibacterial. It's just a fantastic. Is it a spice? Is it an herb? It's a root. I don't know. It's a flavoring. It's absolutely delicious, isn't it? So I don't know if you can hear my my veggies, my aromatics cooking away in here, but to them, I'm going to add three other things that I always keep in my house. Cumin. I love this warming spice. Uh, this actually, this other second brown one is curry powder. Now, the curry powder is simply a mix of spices, lots of different varieties. This particular one did not have any turmeric in it, so I added, I like turmeric, so I added that. And I'm going to add that to the soup or to the um, sauteing aromatics. Just kind of give them a little stir. And you don't want to overdo that because those, those spices are easy to burn. So as soon as you can smell the cumin cooking, yeah, that's probably good. Okay, what else do I normally have in my kitchen cupboard? Tin of tomatoes. Yep, so I'm going to add those. Oh, you can hear them going now. And some water, pretty much, thankfully, always on hand. And also some veggie broth. Now, I'm no way affiliated or partial to Trader Joe's, but I love this veggie broth because veggie broth is one of those things that is often very, very easily full of ingredients that you don't want to be eating. This one, however, is really, really clean, and I think it's actually less than two bucks a carton. Of course, if you make your own veggie broth, even better, right? Water, organic carrots, organic celery, organic tomatoes organic leeks, sea salt, organic onion powder, organic garlic, organic parsley, organic bay leaves, and organic thyme. Completely clean. The only thing you probably would want to take note of in this is that it does have salt added, and it's got 270 milligrams of salt per serving per cup, so you might keep that in mind. If your stock is salted, you want to taste before you add additional salt to any pot. But remember, we get our excess sodium from processed foods and convenience foods, not our home cooking. So I'm just going to add this and turn up the heat a little bit. So we're cooking on high and then I'm going to add my lentils. So again, these are things I always keep on hand. They're always in my fridge or my pantry. Onions, garlic, ginger, carrots, spices and herbs, cumin, turmeric and curry powder in this case, cans, cans of tomatoes, super useful, veggie broth, and just regular old brown lentils. Sometimes they're called green lentils, same, same. They're fantastic for soups. These can tend to get a little, mm, a little mushy-ish if you overcook them, so you wanna be mindful of that. Okay, and then I'm gonna also add the original recipe called for fresh thyme, or for dried thyme, but I still have some thyme in my garden, so I'm gonna add some thyme sprigs, just some fresh thyme sprigs in the garden, and a few, Pinches of crushed red chili and a grind of papa. So that's it. Mm, it smells really, really good already. All I'm going to do is let this cook until the veggies are tender and the lentils are cooked and tender, but not mouché. All right, I'm going to set that aside and I want to show you oh, what I've already done here. And this this recipe had a couple different steps, so. I'm going to have to maybe use our imagination a little bit. Oh, yeah, mama. That. Mm. Doesn't that look so nice and rich? Actually, I'm going to have to get this out of the way here. So this is already cooked, and you can see it's cooked down quite a little bit. You may, when you're cooking soups, especially ones that contain lentils, that can kind of tend to soak up the liquid. You might like to add a little bit more water or a little bit more broth. But. Before we do that, I'm going to use this, one of my, as advertised, my favorite ah, kitchen tool. I love this guy. And I'm going to puree just a little bit of this soup. I'm not going to make it, you know, like a baby food consistency or anything. I'm just going to puree it. Oh, there's my time stem. I'm going to take that out so it doesn't get pureed, although it wouldn't be the end of the world. I'm just make it a little bit smoother, a little bit creamier. There's another thyme sprig <laughs> that I put in that pot. Nice, nice. Okay, cool. And then I'm going to show you another ingredient. Got to get rid of that. That I always keep in my kitchen, and that is some kind of leafy greens. Now, I think the original recipe called for kale, 
Sometimes I have kale, sometimes I have collards. These are actually Brussels sprouts greens. I cooked them on our last, on last week's episode. I'm gonna add these in. You could use spinach, you could use Swiss chard. Yeah, so I'm gonna stir these in. Yeah, you know, I like to throw handfuls of greens in almost absolutely anything and everything. Now, if this were not live TV, I would probably cook this for just a little bit longer. But since it is live and I'm hungry and you are all probably hungry and you probably want to get to your lunch, I'm going to finish this off with a squeeze of fresh lemon. Yeah, that really just perks up the flavors of everything. Hi, Lori. Great to see you. I think you would really like this lentil soup recipe that's got mostly ingredients that I bet you keep on hand as well. Yeah. I wonder if you have a favorite lentil soup recipe, Lori. This one's off of the Cookie and Kate website, which is fantastic. Yeah, and I think she's actually from or lives in Kansas City. Okay, let's see. Did I get everything? Yes. So I've got my fancy, I've got my fancy aromatics. That's the word for things that smell good when you cook them. Onions, garlic, ginger. I always keep those on hand. Carrots, I always keep those in my fridge. And then I threw in a can of tomatoes, always in the cupboard some veggie broth, some water, and some regular old brown lentils. I cooked it until the lentils and the veggies were tender. And then I threw in some greens. Always keep greens on hand. So again, this is a fantastic way to hit the easy button without ordering a pizza. Unless you want to order a pizza, right? Okay, I'm going to going to serve this up and as I mentioned, the greens are going to be not quite as cooked as I would like them to because Oh, but you know what? I kind of like the way they look like that. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. Also put in some spices, some curry powder, cumin, turmeric, and thyme. A pinch of red chili and some fresh black pepper. And a little bit of regular old sea salt. Actually, I didn't put that in, but I'm going to probably after I taste it. Remember, we want to taste first. Mmm. This is so good. You know what? It doesn't need any more salt. The salt and salt, the salt and veggie broth did the trick. The squeeze of lemon really perks up the flavors. This is delicious. Set yourself up for success by keeping a few of these staples in your kitchen, in your fridge. And when things get a little bit busy like they can during the holidays, you'll be good to go. Thank you for joining me for Veg with Lisa live. I'm going to call Robbie for lunch. See you next week. Mm-mm-mm.